think design is it's for everyone, not just those who can afford it, not just those who have a lot of money. Everyone deserves good design. Every student in America deserves to learn in the best spaces possible. My name is Brandon Dake, and I'm the president at Dakewell's Architecture and principal in charge for the Reed Spring Middle School Project. My name's Matthew Thornton, uh, Dakewell's Architecture. Uh, I'm a senior project architect, and uh, on this project, I was a project manager and a project architect. So I grew up in a small town in mid-Missouri on a small farm, and so a lot of my childhood was spent outside. Some of our typical family trips were out to Ozark Streams, play on the rock beach and the gravel bars, float the river. Actually, when the Reed Spring School District came to us and wanted us to look at doing a project there, it was pretty exciting. They needed a new auditorium for the entire district for all grades. Um, and then they needed a lot of work on their middle school. I'll tell you, in the mornings when we entered the building, it was not odd to see a bat or two in the hallway or see a nest of bees that the custodians were spraying down because the building was just falling apart. And so they kind of came to us with those as two separate things at first. And then through a lot of study, we started to realize that it would might be better to do those as one thing. They had the opportunity to buy 150 acres that was between their high school on the south and their three elementary schools on the north. So they said, if we're going to spend this much money renovating the old middle school, what if we were to just build a new middle school on the new land? And so they turned their uh, focus away from renovation to new. At that time, we had a group of four of us, uh, Brandon and I, and, and two of our other uh, architects here in the office, Kirk and Adriana. We had to find out how and where we were going to put a new building on this land. Really beautiful, but really rugged. And so the site work was going to be a huge part of the project, no matter where we put it. And we didn't want to destroy the natural beauty of the site. So we were looking for opportunities and places where we could locate this new building. One of the other things that was a part of the project from day one, of course, was that district auditorium, which for them meant as close to the high school as possible, which was a giant ravine. So <laughs> we had no idea in the early beginnings of the project how the land was going to affect the end result. Because of growing up here and just thinking about the things that we have here that are different from other places, you immediately start to think about things like caves and, and our, our beautiful streams and our, our great landscape that we've got. It started to get organized around four different elements. And those elements are common things found in the Ozark landscape. The classroom wing became this long linear bar that we actually nicknamed the shed. And it's almost the only thing that you see as a built building in the landscape. The atrium kind of navigates down through the topography and we kind of nicknamed that the stream because we saw that as kind of the, the collaboration space or the community space where the students would come together and hang out. So it seemed like that atrium space was like a stream in the woods where the, the maybe the animals would come and congregate. The retaining wall was a very key part of the project because somehow we had to retain all of this earth in order to build in the ravine. And so it was a 480 foot long retaining wall that we kind of nicknamed the bluff. And then the fourth part is the cave, which are the underground spaces, subterranean gym and, and performing art space. When you look at the whole plan of this building too, it's really, really simple. And we worked really hard to keep it really simple. We often have people ask us how we convince our clients to do such bold designs. And we tell them we don't convince our clients of anything. We analyze the problem. We try to come up with as creative solutions as we can to solve as many problems with one move. And then we just present the options and we let the design work speak for itself and let the client make the decision on what's best for them. Construction started in uh, 2015, 
and it was uh, complete by 2017. So it took just about two years, which we anticipated. This was my first experience in a building project. And being a building principal, I was involved a lot. There's always gonna be challenges to a building process. There's always gonna be changes. We had a set budget that we had to meet. They wanted a ring road that would connect all of these schools together, which made perfect sense. Well, that was a significant amount of money that was getting cut from our budget. We worked for a long time um, with our civil engineer, but as we developed it further, we realized um, at some point, you know, we really all just piled in and we drove down through the creek bottoms that, you know, we did it kind of the old old fashioned way and we were able to, you know, do some clearing and then be able to establish kind of a, a path that would wind through the woods without us having to completely wipe the woods out. Tried to select materials that were beautiful on their own so we wouldn't have to add other materials to cover up things we didn't want people to see. One thing that was a challenge through the design process and carried over into the construction process was this wood slat wall that separated the hallway from the atrium. And we thought maybe if we did these vertical wood slats that went floor to roof, that would maybe close off that hallway from the atrium, it would add some additional protection. So we presented that to the school board and we had some renderings of it. The board was able to do a walkthrough and they were getting a sense of the building and they were getting really excited about it. Uh, but as they were walking down the corridors, they're like, we love this big open space that we've got. We don't want to chop it up with this wall because they thought it looked like jail bars. Of course, for us, it was kind of a, a terror moment of, <laughs> whoa, no, no, it's going to be great. Got to stay with us. At one point, they said, all right, we trust you to do this right. We showed them the type of wood that we were going to use. We proposed an idea of adding a little steel angle piece horizontally that would allow us to stop and start some slats. Now what we have is occasionally we'll remove either one or two slats in a row above what's the guardrail height that's required by code and gave the board the openness that they were wanting. What's great about that is what we had designed was a continuous series of wood slats, which would have been great, but what we ended up with was even better. And now the school board loves it. The wall, in the big wall, the buff, what we call it, did some inset and offsets to give the wall some texture and kind of break down the scale of it because it's so large. Because of that, we designed a pattern into the brick that we knew would not repeat. And then when we gave that to the masons to bid, they were concerned by how they were gonna make sure that each mason placed each one of those bricks in exactly the right spot to execute that pattern. We all said, you know what, we need to get the foreman in here. Let's get the foreman in here. We finally came up with an idea and he said, you know what, I could just take a couple pieces of plywood, I could drill a pattern holes in this and we could we could put that up on the wall, spray paint it, because they were it wasn't a random mix anymore. They were just looking at what they needed to do by their color codes on the wall. They actually found that that actually let them go faster and it just goes to show that when you have a good craftsperson like that, they can just take things to another level. The contractor was fantastic, and uh, they did all of their own concrete work, which there was a lot of concrete on this project. And that retaining wall is about four foot thick, and so there was a lot of um, really early pours, and the concrete was a really important part because there's so much of it that is exposed. So they did a great job in protecting that and making sure that the concrete turned out fantastic. So it's just one of those projects that became special. Uh, and I think too, we, we always try to cultivate conditions for that to happen, but it really only comes to fruition um, when everybody that's involved starts to take ownership in it and starts to take pride in it. They have really uh, strong pride in their craft and, and what they do. And so it was just a great experience for us to have such great partners and be able to pull the building together the way that it did. If you go to other schools, you see other middle schools, and then you come back and you see our school, knowing that it's one of the best schools that there is, it's just really cool to be able to call that your own. I really love the auditorium. The auditorium is really cool. It's just like being at a movie theater. So if we have any assemblies or any special movie days or anything like that, it's just like being at a movie theater. It's really awesome. 
it's pretty cool when people come over because you hear people saying stuff like, wow, this is really nice, I wish our school looked like this. So my favorite spot in this building is the gym because it's very nice. Um, a lot of schools don't have that gym, like ours. I still think this is one of the most fun things about the building is that all these spaces are right below us, but you don't really know that. <laughs> you know, all you really see is the wall with the one window opening and the egress tower. So we developed this egress stair that goes down and uh, services the, the gym on one side, Forming Arts on the other, and the connecting hallway. A lot of people would call this a Juliet balcony, which is a lot of fun. You know, we needed a landing space here anyway, but this, you know, we didn't necessarily have to do this balcony, but it's just a really fun place to be during events, especially people dropping off grandma or whatever at the bus loop, and she's coming in for a, a band concert, or if they're here for a basketball game, this is just a great hangout space for the whole district. You know, at the old building, we just didn't have the space to have kids break into groups or break into partners and do that brainstorming and do that collaboration, which is so necessary for our 21st century learners. So at each level, there's an outdoor classroom that connects to an indoor collaboration space. You can go out when you open up the walls, you can go and sit out there and math. Sometimes we go out there and sit on our computers. So my favorite part in the building is the three-story atrium. You walk in and it's flooded with natural light. You can see the entire building. You can connect with people across the way. It seems to have the most personality because it changes over the throughout the day with the changing of the sun. I think that it just really allows the kids to feel like they're in a more open environment and they're not just confined to this one little area or one little desk that they have to sit in. We were looking at the trees and the mullions on the skylight that cascade the light down the wall brings a warmth to that space that they wouldn't otherwise have. Even though they're in a hole, in a ravine, in the middle of the building, they still have this connection to nature. So this is a pretty unique hallway because on the classroom side, it's a wall of glass. So there's a lot of connectivity to the classrooms, a lot of visibility. The natural light can penetrate from the exterior wall into this hall. Also this slat wall that allows connection to the atrium and down below. It's a really live and interesting hallway. It's a 21st century building that allows our 21st century learners to be the best they can be. From a school standpoint, you're really focusing on creating a place where kids want to be. And I feel like this building has really helped that. I mean, for a lot of our students, this is going to be the nicest building that they've ever been in. And so wanting to provide that sense of yeah, pride, but taking care of it, that we want to keep it clean, we want it to look nice and friendly, kind of welcoming environment, which, which again, I think this provides a lot of that. The national average for the poverty rate is like 12.7%. And in Reed Spring, the poverty rate is 17.1%. So it's not like this is an affluent area. They're often getting hand-me-downs, and so having something new or something that they can really be proud of that no one else has is rare for them. I'd say one of the things this project has meant to me is uh, just kind of a reinvigoration and re-energizing. It takes a lot to go through six years of a project like this, but when you get done and you see the excitement that people have and that you get to hear, um, you know, while we were down there, we had some of the kids uh, talk to us about what they liked about the building and it just, uh, it fires you up to do it again. A lot of the really progressive design work is being done on the East Coast and the West Coast. And it's a little unexpected to find something like the Reed Spring Middle School in Missouri. And not just in Missouri, because it's not like it's in Kansas City or St. Louis. I mean, this is Reed Spring, which is this tiny little town, like an hour south of Springfield. So it's really unexpected that there would be this kind of gem of a project in this location that no one's ever heard of. So I think maybe that has been part of the reason why it's garnered so much attention. And maybe for unexpected kids too, that it's in this location where the, uh, you wouldn't expect great design to be happening in a, in a location like Reed Spring. 
and the students don't expect it. But when they get something like this, it just blows them away. The other thing that we always do that we're always thinking about is, you know, what what lessons can we learn from a building and what can we take away? And it's kind of funny because we always challenge ourselves quite a bit on each project. And because we do that, we walk away with those investments kind of returning dividends as architects where, you know, now we joke a little bit about, we can bury a building, no big deal. We've done that. <laughs> we know how to do that. Yeah, working in Southwest Missouri, we, we noticed that there is an attitude towards architecture that good enough is good enough. And for us, that's not good enough. And so we're always trying to push our design further. We're always trying to pursue design excellence. Not sure that we'll ever achieve that, but that's a like a pursuit that we embody here in our office. We're always trying to push ourselves to be better, to be more, to be more bold, and to do bigger things.